Yeah, welcome to the world of music technology. It's fantastic. Um, thanks, Sam. And yes, my name's Kat. I'm the director of um, on Decibel, of which I'm also part. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is the Decibel Score Player, which is an iPad app that we've been working on. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of background about why would anyone want to make a music player on the iPad like this. So um, around the beginning or the middle of the 20th century, a lot of things changed in music. Electronic music became a kind of ratified real music practice and musicians and composers started to get interested in stretching what sounds are actually possible from musical instruments. And traditional music notation, of which I kind of hope you're all vaguely familiar, even if it's just from Christmas carol, Christmas cards or something, um, didn't really do the job anymore. If you think about music notation, it's little dots, quite straight little dots. And that's a very digital, um, pointillistic way to think about sound. So if you want to use sounds that are very long, it doesn't really do the trick. Um, if you want to vary sounds over a very long time, it doesn't really do the trick either. So composers around the middle of the 20th century started experimenting with new ways of writing music, and they developed something called graphic scores. And graphic scores use things other than traditional notation to communicate ideas about music. And in Decibel, we've played quite a lot of those kind of scores, and we have acoustic and electronic instruments in our group. And our own composition practice, um, we started creating scores that use graphics. And paper then seemed to be a bit of an issue for us. Some of our scores needed time counting and so on, and we tried putting them on the computer. And once we started on the computer, we were able to do things like make random generation of scores and put them in motion um, across the computer screen, like watching a movie. And that then led us to wanting to synchronize these computers. And when we did that, we um, set up networks. And then we started to find limits with computers themselves. They're kind of big and bulky. It looks like you're checking your email while you're playing your instrument. And they um, have kind of complex network things and are, are different depending on who set them up. So we applied for some money to develop our own um, iPad app so that we could read our graphic scores on the computer, on the iPads, and network them wirelessly and easily and unobtrusively. And what I'm going to do today is show you some of those and some of the ideas that we're exploring in our iPad apps. So we're going to start with one called Longing. This is one of the first ones that we, we used. Longing is a piece that I wrote, and most of the members of Decibel are also composers, and we've got a, very lucky to have a couple of really great programmers as well. <coughs> The best thing about um, these pieces was that by putting them in motion, like this, you could play them um, at whatever speed. We could move the score around to wherever we needed to rehearse. And we could even change the time by clicking on a little time code down the bottom. And um, on this score here, what you can see, each color is an actual instrument. And it's a piece that looks at the idea of droning sounds and the things that happen, the small changes that happen in those sounds. So a piece like this would be very difficult to notate with dots and drawing them together. Then we got kind of interested in how could we make it look different to the performers, and that's when we started looking at different parts. And one of the pieces we did that with is a piece called Juanita Nielsen. And in this piece, there's a possibility to um, see not just one of the part, no, not just the whole score at one time, but any one person's part as it's moving along. This was really great for things that are a little bit complex where there's lots of things going on. <coughs> yes, people, this is a music score. Uh, the squiggle function is really useful on my computer. The other thing that um, we started doing with this then was, well, okay, we don't have any restrictions anymore about you know, playing forwards and backwards. What about if we jump up and down and change it around? And uh, you see that little red dot on the top of the screen? That means that you've got a couple of seconds and it's going to jump somewhere else and change direction. So as you can see, we're getting lots of really great um, opportunities to explore different ways to put music together, both as composers but also for the performers. Um, then we thought, well, why do we have to read music, like reading a book from left to right? Um, we decided to change the whole idea about what we look at when we read, and we started making scores like this one, which is the talking board. And now what we have is those colours that I gave to the instruments in my piece at the beginning are now circles. And when you play the, cir when you play the piece, the circles move around a terrain, and you play what's inside your circle in that terrain. 
So um, sometimes it's different colours, it's different textures. So you can see what I said at the beginning about musicians wanting to explore things other than melody and harmony by composers are kind of coming to life through the, the iPod app, the iPad app. And you know, there's lots of different iterations of this piece. Every time you press reset, you can get a different version. Um, and then we decided to share the love and um, try other people's scores that weren't written for our um, player. And we um, got other composers and one person, Werner Daffodecker, a German composer, came over and worked with us. And we got a score that he wrote in the 90s and put it in. And as you can see there, he's actually got like time written in there. So rather than look at a clock all the time, we were able to put it in the player. And the musicians just follow the line. It's like a tape player, you know, with the tape head. And again, you could move it around to change different um, areas that you want to practice or change the time, the rate of change. And lastly, another thing that we do is um, commission a lot of local musicians to write music for us. And what our iPad app has enabled us to do is to commission people that wouldn't normally write music at all. And we got an experimental music, pop music composer, Chris Kabilis, you might know him from the Tigers. He um, wrote us a piece of music by just drawing it out, drawing out where he wanted the chords, chords to be, the sounds to be, what he wanted to happen. And it really opened a new world um, to him and to us because he was able to kind of draw out his sounds in a way that without years and years of music training he was able to do. So hopefully you can see through this little short demonstration that the app, which is just about on the store, um, can provide a lot of different possibilities to, to musicians, um, composers, music readers, music writers and performers. It's also got great possibilities for kids who want to learn to, some of the basic concepts of music like proportion and speed and there's not a, not a tempo or melody driven scoring system. So you're going to see it in action. We rarely um, show our projections, uh, we rarely project the screens but just for the benefit of you guys we're going to um, score, show you one of the scores. This one piece is another one of mine called Misfortune X and it uses a model aircraft plan as one of the bases for the, for the music notation. And as the piece goes along, you work out what's happening. So that's what I'm going to play for you now, Miss Fortune X.